my name is Trey. Uh, welcome to the Variety Hour number 33. Two. We're on. 32. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Uh, we got a great and amazing show for you tonight. We're talking all about this new Google Plus Photographers Conference. And uh, many of the speakers that are going to be there joined us tonight. Uh, we have uh, Jeremy Coward, Guy Kawasaki. Uh, we have RC Concepcion. We have the Nicole S. Young. Uh, it'll be great. Uh, very, very excited. And we're just kind of generally hanging out tonight. We'll talk a little bit about the conference. And I also want to find out what everybody's up to. Uh, we have an amazing uh, book giveaway from Guy Kawasaki. Um, all sorts of stuff that, that's happening. Uh, but let's go around and I want people to introduce themselves and talk about what they're doing and, and what's going on. So let's let's start randomly with um, Guy, who just landed in Florida. Yeah, hi. So I'm in Orlando, California. California, no, Orlando, Florida, and I, uh, I'm sitting in a hotel room, and I'm basically editing my book, What the Plus, because about 10 days ago, everything went wrong, and or not went wrong, everything became wrong when uh, Google changed Google Plus, so I have about 100 screenshots in my book, and about 99 are being changed, so that, I'm sitting here doing that, or being changed, so that... I don't know, well... I'm sure you're a, you're a professional. You'll get that jam together in no time flat. <laughs> so this this giveaway that we're doing, is the giveaway going to be for the new version or the old version? Well, depends. I mean, if you can <laughs> wait, I can do it later. But if you want it tonight, it's the old version. No, it's okay. I think the winners will be ready to uh, wait, especially when they find out uh, what they get and uh, the whole deal. It's very exciting. So thank you. Uh, hey, it's Jim. Only a it's only a $3 upgrade to the new version of the book. <laughs> Less than a latte. <laughs> um, uh, hey, Jeremy, what's going on with you? Oh, I am uh, trying to tweet this out so I can get everybody on and let it let them know we're here. But um, otherwise, I'm in uh, California uh, in my house. I have uh, just finished a conference, another conference last week. Um, I'm about to launch uh, a Life Finder tour in May, which means I'll go. I'll be going around from Denver to San Francisco to Orange County, Minneapolis, uh, New York City, and I forget where else to do my own teaching tour. But during the month of May, I'm very excited to be with you guys at the Google Plus uh, conference for photographers. I'm really excited about that, and so I'll be doing that. And I'm trying to launch my new website uh, this week. Uh, JeremyCarrot.com will be all new. And I'm also trying to launch an iPhone app in the next couple of weeks. So definitely a very, very, very busy time, but uh, it's all exciting. So I'm a happy camper. Cool. Thank yeah. you. So, Nicole, are you going to be uh, going to an evening with Jeremy Cowart? I will be. I am, I am signed up and ready to go to the Google Plus conference. Sweet. So I'm pretty excited for that. But, cool. Well, tell us all about what, what you do and how people can find you and stuff. Well, I'm Nicole S. Young, I, otherwise known as Nicole Z. I write books. This is my most recent print book, Food Photography, From Snapshots to Great Shots. And a nice and book it is. Thank you very much, RC. Very proud of it. I love this book. I, and I just found out it's going to be translated into like five different languages. So anyone listening who speaks, I don't remember all the languages. But you'll be able to read it in your own language. Uh, I'm actually in the process of finishing up another ebook for Craft and Vision. I have a few more book projects, print and um, oh, look at that! Yeah, nice, nice, Dave. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm laughing at Dave over here. He's showing off the signed edition of the Nicole S. Young food photography book. Uh, no, I'm writing a, uh, another ebook right now. I've got two more books, a print book and uh, another ebook for, I'd actually my first ebook with um, Trey's Flatbooks company. So I'm kind of been doing more writing than photographing, it feels like, but I enjoy it. It's all about, it's all about photography, so it makes me happy. Cool, thank you, Nicole. Sure. And RC, what's up with you? Uh, not much, not much over here. My name is RC. I am one of the Photoshop guys with Scott Kelby. Uh, so I work for Kelby Media Group in Tampa, Florida. Uh, I've written two books, one on HDR, one on inspiring photographers to get on the web. I'm the host of D-Town TV, a weekly podcast that we do. Uh, so it's, it's just basically all things Kelby. The best place to check most of that stuff out is uh, on, uh, best place to go is the Kelby 
TV.com to be able to check most of that stuff. We have just been through the ringer on getting everything ready for a lot of uh, CS6 stuff. So today was a launch day for Adobe for the Creative Suite and the Creative Cloud and all of that kind of stuff. So the last couple of weeks have just kind of been a blur. <laughs> We've just been sitting here just processing everything between Lightroom 4 and you know, all the Creative Suite stuff. But today it's launch day. We're like, yay, it's cool. So we're doing all these webcasts. So. Uh, and we're ecstatic. I'm, I'm speaking at the Google Plus conference uh, with Scott and Matt and all of you guys. So I think that that's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal time. Great. Yeah, we're excited to see you. I think uh, a lot of people are going to be excited to come to this, this conference. Um, so I want Guy to talk about his book in just a second. But first, I want to describe this incredible giveaway that he has just uh, informed us about. So if you want... To win a copy, he is giving away 500 free copies of What the Plus. And to win, just jump on my Google Plus stream and just leave a comment. And you're instantly a winner. We'll take the first 500, and I'll get to you later about how you're going to be able to, to uh, get, the, uh, get the book. Um, just watch, and I'll leave, like, the final comment, or I'll, I'll change the description, or I'll find a way to make sure you guys <laughs> get this book, all right? Uh, but, Guy, go ahead and tell us what's uh, what's in this book. Why is it so wonderful? Sure. Why should people read it? So, so um, for those of you who don't know my checkered past, I work for Apple as Apple's evangelist uh, back in the mid-'80s. And back then, at least my interpretation of history was that Macintosh was better than the competition, but fewer people used it, and all the experts said that it would fail. And so now fast forward, I don't know, 25 years or whatever it's been, and now you know, I fell in love with Google+, Plus and I think it's better. I think fewer people use it, and a lot of experts say it's going to fail. So this is kind of deja vu. And so uh, it really pisses me off when people don't use the best tool available. So I wrote the Macintosh way back in 1987. And so now I, I'm doing a similar thing where I wrote a book called What the Plus to explain why I thought Google Plus was so great and how to get the most out of it. So it's only the second time in my life that I've written a book about a product. And um, the result is What the Plus. And I'm just trying to help people master Google Plus because I think it's so great. I just love Google Plus. Well, so do all of us. Um, <laughs> Photographers especially uh, seem to love it. It seems to be sort of like the, the perfect medium at the perfect time for the perfect art form, and yeah. it just is all gelling so naturally. But, you know, I have to say, um, with the new interface they introduced a week or so ago, unless you put something that's 510 pixels or so wide, it has those black bars around it. I just hate that. I, mm. It's driving me crazy. I think they're aware of that. I was actually to hang out with Brian Rose, and I that was my main concern because yeah. if you post a square photo and I even saw a Thomas Hawk comment if you post a square photo that should be the largest size that should you know cover both yeah. the horizontal and vertical size of all the way to the edges and even vertical images either push it to the edges or just let it be well, white or they could gray. just make the background be white and no one would have a problem anymore right? yeah. I don't know you know if Steve Jobs Steve Jobs would have fired the person who made that decision I guarantee you that <laughs> Well, the the good news is these these guys seem to iterate pretty darn quick and really listen yeah. to our feedback. So I think they've gotten this this square no uh, you know letterboxing on the side type thing from a lot of people. I think they'll they'll iterate because it's it just uh, you know why not make it a little taller? I mean, pictures yeah. are are awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I uh, so wanted. Uh, give a little uh, plug here to a lot of other authors that are doing something on, on flatbooks.com. Let me screen share this. Um, let me jump over to my, uh, my browser and show you, because we have three new authors uh, that have just launched in the last three weeks that you guys might like to know about. Uh, this one is called Conceptual Portraiture, Volume 1. Uh, this is written by Scott Detweiler. Uh, a wonderful book. Uh, all kinds of great things you'll enjoy uh, learning about. Uh, so that's one. A second one that launched is this one. It's all about composition. It's called the Tuesday Composition. It's written by Joe Decker, um, full of all kinds of great information that you'll appreciate uh, if you're getting into photography. And the last one I'll mention is from Google Plus Star, 
Uh, Paul Rustin, who is a very well-known body painter, he does these live hangouts where he does body painting. Um, and this book is all about his uh, technique and what goes through his mind. And, you know, one thing that most people don't know is that there's a, a lot of thought that goes into the photography of this stuff. Because, I mean, a body painting is one thing, but a good photo of the body painting is something else entirely. And uh, the guy is just amazing. I mean, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this girl um, in, in this one is just, uh, you know, she's naked. Uh, but, you know... How could you tell? The guy is <laughs> amazing. So nothing else is an excuse to, to buy a book with with uh, scandalous photos inside. Uh, okay, Paul, that's about the best uh, plug I can give for you. Uh, anyway, so it's a good excuse for you to support your your local Google Plus artist and kind of share the circle of love. And like Nicole said, she's doing an ebook for it soon. And anyway, it'll be. Uh, I think you get a lot of a lot of fun out of these. Okay, let's talk about uh, this this conference um, and what's going on with it. Uh, uh, Nicole, uh, what are you going to be doing at the conference? Well, I'm just for the first time. I'm actually I'm I, I'm not going as a speaker role or any official capacity. I am going as an attendee. I'm really excited. Uh, a lot of it is to socialize and see some old friends, make some new friends, do kind of hang out in real life with people I've met online. Like Trey, I've never actually met you in person, so I'm really excited to meet you and go to your photo walk. So that's that's kind of why I'm going. I, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on Google Plus, but the photography aspect, you know, and merging the two together, I think is going to be, I think it's going to be really exciting. You know, they're going to have one-on-one uh, -on -one portfolio reviews, which is really, really good information, especially for people who don't have the photography, maybe they're in a smaller community, they don't have the photography community where they get to share their photos on a really intimate level, you know, and get some real feedback from people. So it, it's, I think it's, it's going to start small and if it catches on, it's going to get big. And my expectation is it's going to be a worldwide thing. I don't know what have any inside feedback. I'm just kind of guessing, you know, because Google in general is so big and so worldwide that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be in San Francisco this time. And then maybe who knows, maybe it'll be in, another part of the world so this will yeah this will be like woodstock and like you know five hundred thousand people will claim they went to the first google plus <laughs> photography concert uh conference and only like you know five thousand or five hundred went you know what and and guy that's the funny part about it it's like i remember uh, a couple months ago we were sitting around talking about this and i remember i got a phone call from scott and as like 12 30 at night as you do and i'm like hey what's up and he's like all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm like, what? And he's like, I'm going to put together the Google Plus Photographers Conference. And I'm like, and that means what? And he's like, <laughs> and, and because, I mean, the funny part about it is like walking around and listening to him is one of those things where it's like he sees so far around the bend sometimes that it's like, you're like, dude, you're just going to crash. You really, really are. But he's like, what about, he's like, so many people are doing Google Plus for photography. He's like, so many photographers have gravitated to it. The UI's there, the, the the pictures look great, the community's great, the sharing is great. And he's like, but don't you just wanna get together with the people that you follow, the people that inspire you, the people that work with you to just kinda go out and do something awesome. And he's like, just go out and do something awesome. Go out and, and play, go out and shoot, go out and maybe talk a little bit about shop, talk a little bit about brand, talk a little bit about inspiration. And he's like, not a regimented conference. Is it because when we do those conferences all the time. Like we do, you know, Photoshop world twice a year. And a lot of that stuff, yes, it is inspirational, but it's like, this is what you do in Photoshop. This is what you do in this. This is what you do in that. He said, oh, I want my room service game. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, so, so he sat there and he was just like, what if we just did a conference that was just largely based on inspiration? What if we just did a spot that just turned around and said, let's go ahead and just go and set that up. Sorry, we had to mute Guy Kawasaki there. He was talking to the room service guy about his new book. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but it's, it's anyway, so that's where the genesis of most of that stuff came from. It was just getting together with a small amount of people, you know, like we have several thousand people that show up to Photoshop. Bro. We wanted a small amount of people to get together and just kind of go hang out and just turn around and say, Hey, I want to go do a walk with Jeremy Coward. I want to go do a walk with Trey. Keep these things small so that the interaction that you have 
is a lot bigger, right? So people can actually hang out and talk to Jeremy about inspiration and people can hang out and talk to Trey about inspiration. You can talk to Scott about inspiration. So uh, the conference was built behind that entire thing. It's kind of like this mini party. You know, you, you want to feel like you were a part of something special. You want to feel like you were a part of something big. And, and I really, really do think that Scott's onto something here. I'm, I'm, I can't, I, I can't be any more excited about it. So there, there are 10 different photo walks going on. And when you sign up for the conference, you get to pick which one you want to do. Each one is capped out at, I think, 50 people. And I heard, RC, that you have thrown in something special for your photo walk. You're offering a free coffee <laughs> to anyone that comes to yours, right? Yeah, I'm, throwing, I'm, I'm offering coffee. What was that? <laughs> did, where did I read that? No, I, I'm not making no, that, that up. Was- that was you trying to subvert my walk. You said that I was offering. I was offering hot tubs. <laughs> oh, hot tub weekends. Hot yeah. tub weekends with me, and I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa! I'm not offering such thing. And they were throwing in coffee and all that stuff. No, but I mean, yeah, I'm like, I'm doing a walk in. Where am I doing a walk? I'm doing a walk in Chinatown. So, all right. Uh, so yeah, so 50 people are going to be able to get together, and we wanted to cap that because we wanted people to kind of just feel like they were a part of the walk. We didn't want it to be just like a photo lead. It's like, hey, come with me. 200 people were just like, we wanted people to kind of interact and hang out and do stuff, you know. Yeah, I think it'll be fun and everyone getting together afterwards and comparing shots from different parts of the city. And if, if this crowd is as online active as I think they are, I hope we all use the same hashtag and we should be able to just see live what's happening all over the city at once. Just, I don't think it's ever quite been done, have, 10 groups of socially online active photographers canvassing a city all at the same time. It should be really like wild. Yeah. It's It's, it's going to be great. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be a really, really good thing. I mean, we have two big nights, like uh, the first night of the conference, we have one person talking a night with, and then we have another one where we have another night with. I think we have both of them here, right? Oh, that's right. We do have both of them here. So the first night is uh, the first night we're going to have an evening with Trey Ratcliffe. So Trey can talk to us about all of his different things. And then on the second night, we have uh, Jeremy Gower. Who's going to talk to us about an evening with with both of us. Yeah. So look at that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm I'm normally much more entertaining. So I'll have to (laughs) amp it up (laughs) for the real show. Uh, Jeremy, are you are you leading one of these photo walks? And where is yours going to be? I am doing, uh, I didn't know that y'all were going to be doing photo walks until we had already planned my tour. So I won't be doing one the day before. Um, but I am, I am open and willing to do one at some point. So I don't know if I can squeeze one in, but I would absolutely love to lead one. So dude, just come to mine, man. Take over mine. I'm going to Chinatown. We, (laughs) you can take 25. I'll take 25. There you go. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to, you know, I'll try to figure it out, but, uh, I, Trey, you're, your last one down in Santa Monica, that's the first one I've ever been to. And I didn't really know what it, what all it entailed. So that was fun for sure. Yeah, that was a fun one. The weather was perfect and people were, people were nice and had a good time. It was a, it was a good one. I was, uh, that was the first time I, I was shocked how tall you were. You appear to be normal height in hangouts, <laughs> but in person you're like towering. I have these little stilts that I wear into my jeans. <laughs> so that definitely helps. Yeah, no, it was cool. It was really nice to meet you. And now, actually, we get time to hang out in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. That'll be, that'll I know, be finally. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Is, is everybody here in this chat coming to the conference? Yes, yes. everyone except for Dave Veffer. Dave. Dave, I didn't give you an introduction time. Tell us about you. Um, well, I am Dave Veffer. I am an IT guy slash uh, Photoshop guy at a commercial photography studio in New Jersey. Uh, you can find my profile at plusdave.com. And Dave uh, produces the show for me. It does all of the hard heavy lifting. So thank you, Dave. And then over here in the second to right box is Tony Wang, who I saw on Saturday at another photo walk. How are you, Tony? I'm doing great. Hi, everybody. I'm Tony Wang. I'm the producer here at Twit. Um, I do um, Twit Photo here as well. And also, you know, Trace Variety Hour is my newest show. So. Thank you, Tony. Dynamic and exciting as always. You also produce forecast, right, Tony? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dave will be on next week, so. Ah, 
Yay. Yay. Yay, Dave. Um, Tony, when can we see all your photos that you took from the photo walk? You're really, you're really getting into photography. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, I actually already put them up. Um, I tagged them with the hashtag SF uh, Flickr walk, I think, photo walk. Yeah. Yes. So. I, you know, it was, a, it was a Flickr photo walk, but it was crashed by a ton right. of Google Plus people with all our Google Plus straps. And lots of Google employees were there just kind of surreptitiously lurking about. It was cool. It was fun. Uh, so, Guy, you're giving a big talk at this thing is it is it uh what are you gonna talk about your book or or what i think he's still muted oh we had to mute you guy uh so there's a little mute button up there at the top we heard all this room service activity going on (laughs) (laughs) so uh, i'm gonna probably i'm gonna focus my talk about using google plus for personal branding because i mean you know I'm like the least qualified photographer there, so I'll talk about something I know something about, which narrows it down to branding. <laughs> so um, I'm excited for your talk, guy. I've actually I'm I'm a super geek, and I've already like printed out the whole schedule, and I'm deciding all the classes I want. And yeah. yours is like the first one I circled. That seems like a really in, in, you know it's. Because as photographers, we know a lot about photography, uh-huh. but oftentimes we tend to slack on the business and branding side of things. And I think that we don't realize its importance until it's like way into our careers. And, you know, so that's something that's good that it's getting there out there so people can kind of take notice. Well, that's the only thing I'm qualified to talk about at this conference. So, that <laughs> you know, I try to talk about stuff I know about. Um, so that's what I'll do. It's all about marketing and evangelism for me. See, and I think that that's like that part for me, and 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 I'll just say this just as an unabashed uh, guy fan. You know, I was I was we were saying that when we was talking about, and I was like, yeah, the Macintosh way. I'm like, that book still floats around in our office. Like I've seen it float around, and then when Enchantment came out, we've seen that float around. And I think that that's the part that that's the part that I think that's really, really essential when people are looking at the, this kind of stuff. You know, you're a photographer, you're sharing on this social network and you're doing these kinds of things, whether it be, you know, getting people interested in your art, getting people interested in commerce and getting interested to buy a service, get a flat book or what have you. The most important thing that you do have to keep in mind is that you have to be an evangelist for yourself. You know, you have to, you have to turn around and make sure that you're, you know, likable and approachable and personal and personable. You know all of these different types of things, so I think that that's one of those things that a lot of people don't don't talk about. So I'm so I'm I'm ecstatic that you're doing. I'm that. gonna I will totally cover that subject, and I just want you to know that I'm tired of hearing you telling me that there's one copy of my book floating around your office. Can you guys buy multiple copies or what? <laughs> Busted. We do we share it? That's all we do. We we went on your website and we got the free download of the Macintosh Wing. <laughs> <laughs> guy, guy, I know that I would love to hear from you uh, in your speech. I don't know if you're going to cover this, but I know that I would love to hear from you for people um, like us who are an individual brand. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I am me. My business is me, and I'm always promoting me. And I really hate it if I'm being honest. Like literally, every t- I'm doing a, a tour in May, a speaking tour, and every time I tweet about it, I am literally cringing so hard because I cannot stand to be like, hey, come hear me talk because I'm amazing and I'm going to change your life. Like, it really, really sucks. Um, truly. Why don't you, why don't you just that. hire a virtual assistant? <laughs> I guess I need to, but I just be, I'll be curious to hear your thoughts as to how okay. we can continue to talk about the things we need to be promoting without feeling like a tool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's your title right there. <laughs> there you Talks go. Things without feeling like a tool. <laughs> yeah, there's there's exactly. nothing wrong with feeling like a tool. <laughs> well, I, I'm not doing it very well, so maybe I, I can <laughs> get your advice. Okay. No, I think it, Jeremy, you you raise a good point, but I think uh, no one thinks uh, badly of you because you know you're a genuine guy with with good information. You're you're authentic and. You know, if you're going out to, to share information, uh, you know, how else are they going to find out about it unless you tell them about it? If they're not interested, they just won't go. Um, yeah. But, you know, you have to at least tell them because they 
they don't pay attention to every little thing you say or come to your website to read your tour list. I mean, you got to, you got to mention it. And, uh, you know, you're out there sharing information and advice. You could, you, you could just do what people did 10, 20, 30 years ago and keep everything inside and not tell anybody. Um, exactly. And, uh, you know, so people largely appreciate it. And those people that are predisposed to think you're a tool or crass or whatever, you don't, you don't care about those people anyway, because they're, they're not, they don't need to be in your circle. Just go ahead and just carve them off as, as people that you don't need to think about. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting for sure. And I'm, I'm figuring it out as I go along. So thanks for the advice. For sure. <laughs> Dude. And you know what the, you know what the perfect analogy of, uh, the perfect analogy for that, uh, Jeremy, and, and, and I know this because I mean, I personally know you and things like that. I was talking in Photoshop world and I was giving a talk on social media and how to use social media for interactivity and community and things like that. And, you know, we, we do this because we love it, but we know that there's a part of us like you that's in a business for this, right? So you do have to kind of transact business to this. If you get on the social web and all you're doing is just going like this, buy now, buy now, buy now, buy now. People are just so attuned to just seeing all of this, buy now, buy now, buy now, buy now, that a lot of people are doing this. They just walk around like this. So what I tell people, and it sounds corny, but the analogy that I use is when people are doing this, just do this. It's just like, just put your hands out, just put your yeah. hands out and reach out to these people because in order for those people to come over and hug you back, they got to do this. So for that one moment that they take their hands out and get together with you, communicate with you, commune with you. That's the kind of personal, and I know that that's what you do in spades. So what I'm, so what I'm saying for that part is you do that. You have a relationship with people. You're a very, very genuine person. So you're already doing that. People love you. So as they're doing that stuff, bring them in really, really tight and go, I really want you to come to the life finder tour. <laughs> and then you're there, dude. And it's, and, and it's very genuine. It's, you know, you're not, you're not just selling out. Yeah. No, it's good. And another thing I've I've started doing that that is helpful. Even today on Google Plus, I uh, I changed my header banner um, and my Facebook timeline cover, and and I have a, a website called Who Say that where I put when I post an image, basically it's just advertising. So I think that helps. Just you know, my new banner on Google Plus is advertising the tour. So hopefully I can get away with at least just using the the advertising and not having not not have to spam people as much about it so we'll see it's fun it's Jeremy, kind of Jeremy how do you like how do you like who stay I like it you know I like that we can uh, control our interface and put whatever we want up there and they don't own anything um, I really enjoyed it so far what about you um, I like it too but I don't like that I can't export to Google Plus yeah it's a problem you know because Google hasn't opened up its API so that and it, I think they should because that's where all the Hollywood people are. They're on Husay. That's why they just keep broadcasting to Facebook and, and Twitter because it's integrated. And, yeah. you know, it's not that they're lazy. It's just that they're busy. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily, guys like you and me or, and all of us have, you know, a little bit of extra Internet time so we don't mind putting stuff on various networks and, and making them yeah. different on every network. But that does take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm, exactly. Speaking of, when is the Google Plus API going to open up? Does anybody know? <laughs> <laughs> Guy, do you have any inside info for us? Before the end of 2012. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know if they're ever going to. I think one of the things they're trying to do is keep all these automated posts off of Google Plus that are going to happen as soon as they have an API. Well, but, you know, you know, I mean, I, I understand that concern. But so, you know, make it, you have to be verified before you can use the API. I mean, there must be some way around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a bad, that's not a bad way to, it's not a bad uh, approach to it. Do you think, uh, I, I think that if people just start doing a lot of automated check-ins or, you know, automated whatevers that I'll just uncircle them. Um, if it get if it gets annoying, uh, then uh, I'll just turn them off. So. I think people are generally smart about what is and isn't automated. Well, you know, I, um, I I have an automated process for Twitter, where I have contributors who write 
tweets for me and they're automatically posted four times eight hours apart so I'm the height of automation and I can tell you that it's not a problem and you get four times more click-throughs than if you posted it once mm -hmm. so I'm the extreme of that and you know I mean I don't have that many enemies on Twitter I mean it's not like I'm a, you know I'm a bad guy on Twitter so the the realization is that you know there are people at 8 a.m. Pacific and there are people at 11 a.m. Pacific and 3 p.m. Pacific and 6 p.m. Pacific and those are very different populations yeah yeah that's a good point I uh, you know I think most people you can't expect people to read every one of your tweets they don't watch you yeah. that closely um, yeah you know. so you're just basically it's like a rerunning headline news in a way you know if it you is. want to catch up on what guy's up to or what guy thinks is interesting you know I'm not gonna go uh, data mine you through the day I just want to look and see what's there so yeah I well it's you know, if you ever if you're ever really bored, try watching CSP, CNN, or ESPN for a day, and you see how much they repeat. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's very true. Um, so, what, uh, Jerry? What panels are you doing at the uh, at the conference? What did you sign up for? Well, uh, I was never really given an option. So, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, dude. Uh, I, I was sent an email and told what I was going to be doing, and that oh, okay. looks like uh, live blind photo critiques is what I'll be doing. Uh, yeah. I was I was told I will be doing an evening with myself, um, <laughs> uh, growing. <laughs> I can't stop loving. Growing your audience on Google Plus panel and portfolio review. So that that's my uh, agenda that I have received. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm doing one of these blind critiques too. I've never done one. I assume, it, I'm just guessing what it means is that that means we're critiquing someone's photo, but we don't know who that someone is, right? Yes, exactly. That's uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I had no idea what it was either. So there you go. They do yeah. them on um, the grid. So on the cool. RC, is, you know, the, the Scott Kelby media grid show that they do every Wednesday. So yeah. I guess the intent is that it helps us to be more brutal, mm -hmm. right? Well, well critical, more honest. Critical. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say brutal, but yeah. I wouldn't say critical. Definitely but now, critical. now, if you want, if you want, if you're going to the conference and you want someone to be brutal to your photos, make sure you try and get them into Trey's little yeah. There with the, yeah, I don't care. I'll tell you what I think. But he's going to be the old curmudgeon on the lawn. He's going to be like, "That thing sucks. Move it. Next one." <laughs> well. Uh, luckily, I'm already so polarizing that either people will listen to what I say or they just don't even care. So, you know, if people don't like my analysis, they can just write it off and that's fine. Obviously, I, I think every that's the weird thing about critiques is that every photographer has their own baggage, right? They really see the world in a certain way. So whatever critique you get is through one particular lens. And so I really don't think that critiques are necessarily that great unless you're able to somehow synthesize various critiques from various lenses and understand all the combinations and permutations of the baggage that photographer who's giving the critique brings into it. Otherwise, it can be a very confusing process if you're the critique -y. I think it also depends on who's critiquing your photos. Like, if I have somebody critique my photos who maybe I don't know the photographer, or I don't particularly like their work, or I don't respect them, then it's not going to weigh as heavily as somebody whom I actually respect very highly. I believe their photos are what I aspire to, you know, have my photos become. They're very acclaimed. They have good images. They're not just, you know, a hack who happened to make it. Then that's, you know, it really matters. I think, you know, you should find people to critique your work who you respect uh, and who has experience as a photographer and actually knows what they're talking about. But you know, I like because I know for the Google Plus conference, it's I think it's the attendees are able to we're able to submit our work to have it critiqued. So there's a part of me that's very like, should I do it? You know, it's that nervous, you know, because I have photos. I'm very fond of some of my photos. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, well, should, if I put my favorite photos out there and they just get ripped to shreds. <laughs> I'm going to think probably very differently about those photos. And I, I've had, you know, people make a comment on maybe one one photographer in particular, I said, made a comment, and I, I was open to it. I wanted him to critique my image. 
And he made one comment, and now to this day I don't like that photo anymore. <laughs> so I'm afraid to put photos in there that I actually like. <laughs> but that's what I should do because other, otherwise I won't grow. So it's 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 very tough. <laughs> Yeah, it is tough. So, hey, for people just tuning in, um, I want to reiterate this great offer that Guy Kawasaki is giving. So he's giving away 500 free copies of his book. If you want to win one, just leave a comment in uh, the Google Plus thread on, on my stream for this live hangout. Um, Guy, people are not just commenting, but they're, they're saying all kinds of things, nice things about you. Um, this one guy, Mark Webb, says that without Guy Kawasaki, the inner, the inner tubes would not be as cool. He's somewhere around uh, comment 100. Uh, people love you, Guy. Why? So, Guy, why do people... Here's a big meta question, okay? But why, why do people like you so much? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't threaten anybody. I don't know. I'm enchanting. I wrote the book on enchantment. What can I say? I don't know. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> You are enchanting. Maybe they cool. maybe they think I'm Jackie Chan. <laughs> Dude, I never thought about that. And I'm just gonna keep looking down now. <laughs> I think it's because you're so you exude happiness. And I think yeah. people thrive on that. Yeah. Can, can I um, can I get a critique on a photo now? Just, yes. Wow. Okay. Dun, dun. okay Let, him have my photo. Let him have it, Trey. Here we go. No, hey, Trey, I this is a photo I took yesterday. What do you think? This is a little bear playing goalie. <laughs> I won't start. I'll let Nicole start so she can uh, dash your dreams upon the rocks of truth. <laughs> I think wow. it's very cute. <laughs> um, I like your frame in a frame. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, you, you cut off the goalie, though. Like, I, it's, it's cut off. Well, he's yeah, a short guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your turn, Trey. <laughs> uh, okay. I love that. I love that. That was totally the refrigerator comment. That was like, well, guy, that's a really nice picture. We <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> Gotta say something nice, right? And then you balance it with something. <laughs> Whatever the opposite of nice is. <laughs> uh, that's okay. <laughs> I work for Steve Jobs. Nothing can bother me now. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so if, if Nicole had taken that photo, I know what she yeah. probably would have done because she's good at taking photos of little things. But <laughs> this is the wow. thing you could have done is you could have gotten a camera like a little lower, right? Yeah. So you can actually, you could put the camera right on the ground. It was on the ground. It Well, you, you cut off the bottom of his little paws. <laughs> back up maybe? Was it a longer lens? Like maybe the lens was too long, so you, you would have had to back up. But, the yeah, we got back. And it maybe just get that, just get that bear in focus, and then you could still have the, the goal in the background be a little bit out of focus. That would have given it a little bit more. Well, the, the truth is that the camera was on the ground and the distance between my eye and my jaw is too big, so I couldn't look through the viewfinder. So I was guessing. <laughs> I see. Well, you can always... <laughs> I see. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll, use, we'll use this as a transition to uh, people, uh, show some of their own photos because we do... Everyone uh, in here is an interesting photographer. Uh Maybe except Guy, but uh, maybe we could show some photos that we've been doing recently, and you could talk through them and uh, and uh, tell us what you were thinking. I I always like to say, and maybe this is just me, uh, but I always like to talk about the the art, the science, and the story behind it, because you know that we actually have three kinds of viewers. Uh, one type of viewer is one that's just interested in art but doesn't really know that much about photography. We have a lot of photographers that watch the show that want to know about the lens and the f-stop and all that nonsense. And then the third type is really just they want to know the story about what happened. So usually if you go through those three things with every photo, then you make everybody happy. So, um, Jeremy, do you have some stuff you want to share with us and uh, talk through? I do. Uh, I am still gathering a couple of things, so maybe let somebody else go first. 
Ah, okay. Uh, who's who's ready? Raise your hand if you're ready. I can go. I'm ready. Go, Nicole. Go. Okay. I'll go ahead and screen share. Okay. Can you guys see my photo? Yes. I have a couple. I have two, actually three photos. Is that all right? Yes. I can, I can try and move quickly. Can, can you so make this, your window wider, Nicole? I, I can do that. Absolutely. How's that? That's good. Okay. So this is a photo. I, I went, I live in Seattle. I'm in Portland, Oregon right now, but I, my apartment, I'm up in Seattle. And I wanted to go photograph the tulip fields and it's about an hour north drive of Seattle. So I went there for a couple days. Well, I got up there and not only were the tulip fields barely blooming, there was like three rows of actual tulips, bunch of daffodils as in this shot. Uh, the weather was not cooperative. So I kind of just went with the uncooperative weather and found all these gloomy, stormy skies. Um, I have another photo actually of, of, of really cool different skies, but this was a long exposure over the daffodil fields. I use, um, whenever I photograph landscape, for the most part, when I'm doing a wide landscape, I, use, I like to use my tilt shift lens because I really like to correct the geometric distortion. So I used my 24 tilt shift lens. I used a 10 a Lee Big Stopper, which is a 10 stop ND filter to uh, block the light. So I could get some of the, the clouds are all kind of smooth and silky because of that really long exposure. I believe it was, I think I have the photo details here, it's like a hundred and something seconds, 130 second exposure at F11. So that was kind of taking, you know, oops, wrong one, making, uh, taking lemons and making lemonade with it. So there's that one. Uh, my second one is, it's not a good photo. So this is, it's, there's a lot of story in this photo. So this is my photo. And then this is my boyfriend, uh, Brian Matias. This is his exact same photo of the same scene. He used a different lens, so it's a little bit wider shot. His is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, what, <laughs> if you want to actually hear, read the full story about what I'm about, the condensed version was, uh, he was standing next to me and accidentally bumped my tripod while I was doing this exposure. And it was one of those moments where the light was in the perfect spot. And, you know, you see this angle of light coming right here. And this had been all gloomy and gross. And then the sun came out and it was glorious. And I had this beautiful reflection and I was getting the perfect shot. And then boom, and I, I lost it and it was gone forever. Are you sure it wasn't one of these smarmy situations where he's like behind you showing you how to swing a golf club? <laughs> well, I, I think he knew I was getting a good shot too, so he just wanted to. Uh, yeah, to typical Matias move. But, <laughs> but he, you shot, know he shot blocked you. He got a be yeah. <laughs> he got a beautiful photo, so I'm happy that his turned out. Um, and it's just kind of one of those things we laugh about now. I wasn't really even a. It was a thing we laughed about at the beginning, you know. But it was still so so. You know, it's a one of those learning experiences. You know, make sure that when people are crisscrossing their tripods next to yours and trying to steal your shot then, uh, you know, that they don't mess it. <laughs> so, and say hi, Brian. Well, hi. <laughs> he just walked in listening to me talk about him on his back. All right. And my last one is actually, uh, I've shared this on Google Plus, but I recently have, uh, I recently got a Lytro camera. Maybe I'll, I wonder if I make my screen smaller, if that'll make it bigger. Yeah, there we go. So I got a Lytro. I've been having a lot of fun playing with this. And this is actually for my rooftop. And the Lytro camera allows you to, when you click, as I'm clicking on the Space Needle there, it changes the focus yeah. to the Space Needle. So I've just been having a lot of fun playing with this and kind of learning it. It's uh, There's a little bit of a learning curve. but um, And I know, Trey, you have a lot of uh, experience using these as well. So I thought I'd just kind of share that image. So those are my photos. That's all. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I'll, I'll share some now, and then maybe we'll go RC and then Jeremy and Guy, if he wants to share some also. Uh, let me screen share my screen here. Just share my whole... Guy can, Guy kind of ruined it for us. I don't think any of us can top that uh, that bear goalie. After goalie bear. I don't know, man. <laughs> All right, so let me now. I'm going to do something special. I'm going to show some Lightroom photos that are really I haven't even photoshopped yet. Okay, uh, can you guys see that shot of San Francisco? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so these are all new shots that I just took. 
I think two nights ago, and I haven't had a chance to fully process them yet, but there's nice little stories behind them and whatnot. So this is shot with a uh, 28 to 300 lens on a tripod. Uh, this spot I found using Stuck on Earth, which is you know the, the free app that helps you find photo locations. And this was in Thomas Hawk's top 50 secret spots in San Francisco. And first I went here with Tom Anderson two nights before. We had a heck of a time trying to find this exact spot. Um, but then we found it. And it, the real shot from his is looking straight down the bridge. But if you move over a little bit to the left and use, you know, I think this is just about 28 millimeter on a full frame. Then you can get the city and the bridge. Um, so I, I like the way this uh, turned out. This has had Lightroom adjustments in it, by the way. That's not, you know, right out of the camera. Uh, but uh, once I'm all done with it, I'll put it up on Google Plus and you'll see the final version, which I hope will be even, even better once I spend some Photoshop love on it. Okay, then I'll show you uh, one, one other photo, but there's a little bit of a story behind it. So I went to Burning Man and um, I saw this amazing statue there two years ago. Uh, her name is Bliss. Uh, she's huge. I don't know if you can tell, but these are people down like under her feet. Um, it was a really cool statue and it looks amazing from every angle. And, and I always heard that uh, they took the statue away and put it somewhere in San Francisco, but I didn't know where. I'm sure I just could have Googled it or whatever, but it just kind of was one of those things that stuck in my mind. And so I was using Stuck on Earth to find a few places in, in San Francisco. And then I saw this girl statue pop up again. So I went to go take photos of her that same night. Um, and I'll show you three photos. These are all right out of the camera. Um, and then maybe you guys um, in the comments, if you want me to edit one versus the other, I can't decide which one of these to edit, but I'll show you. I'll show you all three of them. So here's the first one I took. Um, they put it in a really cool spot. It's in this park on Treasure Island. And you can see, um, you know, let me zoom in here. You can see San Francisco uh, there back behind her foot. Um, it's still loading the, uh, uh, the higher res version of it. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a really cool location for a, uh, for a statue. I kind of positioned her so that she was just kind of behind these trees or in the middle of those two trees at least. And so the color changes um, every five minutes or so. So that's that's option one, red. Okay, vote for one. That one if you like, want me to work on that one. This is option two, uh, purple. Um, one thing that's neat about the statue is she's uh, she's made out of these little grids. And sometimes she's lit from the inside when you can see the grid. Sometimes she's lit from the outside, and she's sort of flatly lit. So this one is later at night. Then here's the third option, when she's all pink, and this is uh, later after the sun gone down. So anyway, there's uh, a couple unedited photos and a few little uh, stories and options for you. I'll stop. I like your purple one, Trey. You say purple? I like because of the background. Yeah, it's, the background makes the purple. Nicer, yeah, you have a nicer, it's a little bit lighter gradient. It's not too bright, not too dark. So it, it kind of makes the whole photo come together. Purple, okay. And I like purple too, but... but. Your opinion carries uh, a lot of <laughs> so thank you. Oh. Um, okay, um, RC, you want to share some and then uh, Jeremy can? Oh, uh, yeah. Guy, by the way, Guy, if you want to, you can get a few more photos ready to share. Uh, go ahead, RC. Oh, guys, guys muted. <laughs> Sorry, um, I have to deal with somewhat of a, <laughs> a special thing right now. So, um, okay. if you don't mind, I have to drop off now. Okay. No problem. I have it's a hangout. I have a special circumstance here. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing everybody at the conference soon. Thank you for All having right. me on the hangout. Bye bye. Right. Good, night. Bye, bye. bye bye. Good night. Bye. Was it me or did he just say I have to deal with a sexual thing? No. <laughs> no. Special. Sure is what special. special. I'm going to check your special. mic there, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> I think he got excited when he heard about an evening with Jeremy Cower. <laughs> oh, dude, that's I funny. I changed my schedule for that. Over on the over on the Twitch chat, <laughs> over on the Twitch chat, uh, reposter said room service arrived. <laughs> arrived. Right. That's just wrong, reposter. <laughs> 
Yeah, so by the way, we're all watching, or a lot of us are in the Twit chat room. If you're watching on live.twit.tv, they have a chat room there, and I'm in there, RC is in there, and I bet other people are too, so we enjoy reading all the, the live comments streaming in there as well. Okay, go on, RC, tell us what All right, what... Uh, here, hold up a second. No, uh, that's just uh, opening. Whoa, no, that's not what I want to do. Whoa. All right, can, you guys, can you guys see this okay? Yes, we see okay. a lot of right. photos changing. Uh, Hold up a second. No, no, let me do this. Well, these I've already shown before. So that's just, uh, this is one shot that I did over in uh, Washington, D.C. Recently, we had gone out and we had taken a look at the, uh, you know, we're doing a Photoshop world in D.C. And a lot of the times what happens is we don't get a lot of time to play around. So we got one night and the night before we kind of went out and we shot uh, the Lincoln Memorial. We were shooting with the tripod late at night. By late, I was like talking like 10 o'clock at night. A lot of the times, what happens with that stuff is a lot of the times there's people kind of floating all over the place. And one of the first questions that people ask about this is, you know, were there people there? I was like, obviously there were people there. The best thing to do, and a lot of the times when you're working with HDR stuff, rather than sit there and press and hold it and just kind of just turn around and just go clack, 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 and just hit all five shots at the same time, just take yourself off of a continuous mode and just hit one, hit the second one. If somebody stands in front of the shot, just wait and then wait for that person to leave and then hit the next one and then hit the next one and then you're done. So that's something that can do that. And the other thing that I wanted to do from a technical detail for this was I wanted to try to do something that made it look very, very different. Like when you sit at the Lincoln Memorial, it's a very different experience than seeing kind of like the straight up part of the Lincoln Memorial when people just see that kind of uh, the horizontal version of it. A lot of the times it just looks like a little toy. And what people don't know is that the span from one leg to another is about six and a half feet. I know. So <laughs> what I did for this was this is actually 18 shots. So it's shot in a vertical panel. So what I did is I shot portrait mode and I shot nine frames, and then I moved the tripod to the right, and I shot the other nine frames. And I shot from a corner of it so that you kind of get that same feeling that you get when you're inside of the Lincoln Memorial. I mean, it's a big, big, it's a big, big monument. And a lot of the times I think that we lose that quite a bit. So uh, two more shots. This one. <sighs> that night we went to bed and everybody turned around and said, you know what, man, I totally want to go. I totally want to go at five o'clock in the morning. Totally want to go at five o'clock in the morning, get together and do the sunrise. Everybody went to bed and I'm like, all right, guys, I'll see you guys in two hours. Went to bed for two hours, got up and people turned around and just nobody came. <laughs> I was standing outside at like 4:45 in the morning and no one's there. And I'm like, dude, this sucks. No one came and I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to go out. And the reason nobody came out was because everything was socked in. So they were like, you know what? No sunrise, no capital, forget it. A lot of the times when you turn around and you, when you think you don't have a shot, you should still go try and take the shot. Go try and take the shot. Work it. Wrestle with your shot. Sometimes the best shot that you're looking for is a shot you don't know that's there. So I got in a cab and I said, you know what? I'm just going to try it. I'm going to try it. I went through the front and the front sucked. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to walk around. And as I was walking around, it was still cloudy. It was still socked in. And I said, you know what? Let me throw caution to the wind and let me just try that shot. So it's about getting aggressive and being aggressive and jumping in and just doing most of that stuff. And I got, I kind of got that morning, morning hour shot that in HDR would work very, very well. You know, jumping a railing and showing up somewhere where you're not supposed to sometimes could give you a really, really good shot. So uh, this is the one I want to talk about. A lot of the times when, when I'm going out and I'm trying to work on making a shot, what I'll do is I'll usually preconceive a shot, right? This guy's a glass blower that's here in Tampa. And I saw him blowing glass and I'm like, you know what? I really, really want to make a great shot of him. So I ran there and I was like, dude, let me go ahead and make a shot with you at 2200 ISO and just hold still. So I did this shot and the shot sucked. It was a horrible shot, but I ran to the pizza place next door, opened up my Mac, processed it as best as I could, and I brought it back to him. And I said, take a look at this. 
This is awesome. Now, this shot isn't the 2200 ISO shot. The 2200 ISO shot sucked, but it was better than a shot that he had normally seen of himself. So when I told him, dude, I need to make another shot of you at a much different ISO for a longer period of time where you're going to stick your face really close to a flame and you're going to hold still, he gets it. He's like, dude, I know. Okay, I know exactly what you're trying to do. I'm willing to do it because I saw the shot that you did prior to that. So sometimes the, the key point with all of this stuff, I think for me, is about being aggressive. Sometimes when you're working with shots, just when you think you don't have it, you have to go out and try to make it. Just when you think that it's not going to be there or somebody's going to say no, you have to wrestle with it. And I think that that's the important part. When I go out and shoot, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for how can I wrestle that picture down? I don't, I try to, inspiration's great, but I don't wait for inspiration. I try to wrestle inspiration down so that I can go and shoot what I need to shoot. You know, RC, also to piggyback off of something that you said in there was a lot of times when I'm watching other photographers photograph other people, uh, you know, whether it's a model or it's just someone on the street, they'll just be very into their camera. They'll be taking a picture, looking at their camera, taking a picture. Uh, the moment you get a great photo and you show it to that model or whoever you're photographing, they go, oh my God, I can actually see, you know, they see through your eyes, they get your vision. All of a sudden their confidence goes through the roof and well, then they become a much better model for you. So that's, you know, something to consider. It's a very intimidating process. And what happens is, and I always tell people all the time that this is the process, right? When people shoot anything, this is the process that people see. Mm. And it's like aiming a gun at somebody. Somebody turns around and they're like, they're like, what, are you, what is he doing? What is he doing? Where is he going with this? Where is he going into this? And then you click, and I see people do this all the time, and I hate it. You click, <laughs> and you show frustration, and the person that's sitting there is going, what did I do? And they don't realize that it's you. You're struggling with this gear. You're struggling with the switches. You're struggling with all of this stuff. The moment that you turn around and you go, hey, let me show you this. The moment that that happens they realize that it's a partnership. They realize that you're working with them to make a really, really good shot. And that makes all of the difference when you're shooting. Yes. Uh, thanks for that, RC. Uh, so we've been uh, joined here by Vic Gondotra. Hey, Vic, how are you? I think you're muted. You know, there's this new book by Ka a guy Kawasaki that talks <laughs> about the class and how you can use it to the greatest effect. And <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, hello, everybody. I was just enjoying the discussion. Thanks for uh, letting me drop in. Sure. We, uh, we've been talking about this big uh, Google Plus Photographers Conference, and, uh, you know, I'm sure I speak for everybody when I say thank you for, uh, you know, supporting the photography community and helping to put this conference together. We're, we're all really, really excited about it. I'm, I'm excited as well. I know Bradley is speaking and forward to the Google Plus photography community has a big has had a big impact on me. In fact, Trey, I just got my first print from the place you recommended. Can I can I show it to you? Yes, let's okay, see. Hang on. Image Wizards. Yeah, let's let's take a tour of the uh, Gundotra Palace. <laughs> I guess it probably was. Yeah, that looks like Image Wizards there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. Can you, I, see it reflecting. I see it reflecting <laughs> back on. Now we can see it. Can you see that? Yeah. 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 I mean, the image detail is just unbelievable. They do amazing work. So what's special about Image Wizards? Well, well uh, <laughs> so Image Wizards, and I... Maybe I'm not the best person to talk to this because I don't know much about printing. But from what I know is, is I've seen many metal prints from many different companies, and they start with this pure white sheet of aluminum. So it initially starts with sort of this uh, luminosity that's glowing. And then when they they print on top of it, something happens when you look at it. It doesn't come across on on video. It's like seeing a commercial for HD TV on a a regular TV, but it does feel like like a, a 40 inch or a 50 inch Apple display. It's really remarkable. If you have the good lighting on it, it's it's crazy. Yeah, Did I you take that photo, photo, Vic? I had gotten my new Canon 5D Mark III. I walked outside. The sprinklers had just been running, and I reached. I sat down on the ground and took a picture of a tulip, 
and I was really rushed. I only had like two or three minutes. I came in, and that's unprocessed completely. Not a single thing has been done to the shot. Just from raw, I sent it to Image Wizards. They printed it out of this thing. It's incredible. Um, and I'm blown away. It's pretty amazing. Cool. What kind of lens did you use there? That was a 50 millimeter 1.2, uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I mean, you can't, like you said, you can't tell on video. Um, you have to actually see this thing. But I think your example of an a Apple cinema display is exactly right. It just looks so unreal. It yeah. almost looks backlit. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. Exactly. It, it's just it's just unbelievable. And it's, you know. Here, I'll show you mine. Watch this. <laughs> this thing so reflective. I guess <laughs> the level of detail that these guys put out on, on their stuff. Like I think we have I have like six of them floating around here. They just do phenomenal, phenomenal work on that stuff. Artsy, so, I, I think I have that print. Did you send one of those to Bradley? Uh, this one? Oh no, no, it's a different one. Okay, no. I'm oh, sorry. here. I that. Oh, that's just gonna say. Uh, I know that they they have a bunch of my stuff there. That's and here, just for those who are watching in the chat, that shot was this shot. Uh, that was actually taken from. Okay. There's a ho hotel in New York City called the Essex House Hotel. Yeah. So that's the. Uh, that's from the roof of the Essex house. Cool. It's a nice one. But, uh, but yeah, so they do phenomenal. I'm glad you like those guys. Those guys are phenomenal, phenomenal. Thank printers. you for the recommendation, that's right. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Well, we were going around the horn here and just getting to Jeremy Coward, who's going to share some photos and tell us about them. I'm going to drop off really quickly, but thank you guys so much for letting me uh, hop in for a minute. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Hello. Uh, so yeah, just before the, the chat started, I uh, remembered, oh yeah, I need to show some photos. Um, a lot of photo shoots I do that I've done recently, I'm not allowed to share. And so I just decided to show some work that has uh, been on my website for a while, but at least I can tell the stories behind them. And uh, I can't remember which images I shared last time, but anyway, I'll just jump in. Let me see. I have such slow internet here at my house that uh, let's hope this works. Um, the screen share. Here we go. One second. Can y'all see me? Here we go. Yes. Are you seeing one image or three? Three. All right. So it's because you're sharing bridge rather than so if you share the whole desktop or share the app that's opening up once you open the image. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll just do uh, we'll just do this. Um, could make the thumbnails giant and bridge. Yeah, that's true. We'll just do that. So there's our giant thumbnail. Um, Gosh, I suck. I'm trying to open it in Photoshop. Um, hello, Photoshop. Exit out of the screen Is share. It? What's that? Exit out of the screen share because you're just sharing Bridge. So when you open it, even if it opens in Photoshop, it won't show up because you're just sharing Bridge. Okay. Uh, so I'm sorry. I've never done this before. So, so how do you, I stop you sharing? Go back, go back to the Hangout and click screen yeah. share again. And then click it again to bring up the dialogue of what screens to share. And then okay, either choose desktop or Photoshop. Okay, I got it. All right, here we go. So like I said, this is my first time to do this. Last time I tried it, uh, my internet cut out on me, which was a good time. And I'm sure this this uh, chat is really engaging and exciting to watch right now. So <laughs> no, it's all right. Don't worry. Thanks, everybody, for hanging in there with me. Now, believe it or not, I have a theory about that, uh, Jeremy. It's in it's interesting to watch interesting people fumble around. Um, <laughs> it's true. I mean, that sounds weird, but, yeah. um, you know, like, for example, I'll even watch Leo Laporte, like, between shows where, like, he, you know, he's just w doing whatever. It's just interesting. I don't know why. So fumble around all you want. We're really drinking it in. Uh, it shows, well, it I'm in here. You're human. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in Photoshop, and it's not... <laughs> All right, so, so exit out of the screen share and share your whole desktop. It's the first okay. option when you try the screen share. share. 
Maybe do a little bit of pruning first. And hey, make sure there's nothing that we shouldn't see on your desktop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So by the way, while uh, uh, while he's doing that, everyone else can get ready their little um, Google Plus photographer discoveries or their suggestions of people to circle or follow or whatever. I've got mine ready to go. There you go. That looks good now. Desktop is clean. I do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll at least start with that. How's that? Will that work for now? Sure. Um, yeah. This is just an image of my friend, uh, Laura Bell Bundy, and um, she's a, a country artist. And um, so we did an album shoot for her. And the next day we said she wanted to go down on the beach and mimic a classic Marilyn Monroe photo shoot. So we just walked around, no lights, no assistance. And uh, I mean, actually, I did have assistance because we were doing a separate video thing. But uh, really, really uh, run and gun for my style. I usually do the big shoots, big sets, all that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was, it was very, very cold. And she just had uh, her, her bathing suit and a sweater. And um, I'm using a new software called Visual Supply Company. They make uh, vis uh, Visco films, that they call it. And if you go to visualsupply.co, um, you can check out their software because it's really, really amazing. Basically, it's Lightroom presets. He just dumped the presets into Lightroom or Aperture. And you can mimic pretty much every film, uh, every film stock there is and get different film looks. So this is the digital file shot with my Canon 5D Mark II process with visual supply company and it looks like um you know it looks like film and so uh yeah i just i love and you can see this full photo sheet on my blog if anybody's interested there's a lot more photos on the blog post featuring her shoot so uh that's laura bell bundy um who is a very good friend um this was a uh, well you know what i'll, I'll rewind um a couple years ago um I got, uh, I was heavy and, and overweight and there was a gym I wanted to go to, to work out. And so I called this gym and I said, Hey, can I, uh, can I work out there in exchange? I'll do some photos for y'all. And they said, sure, why not? So they started letting me work out at this gym and in exchange, I would do photos for them. So, uh, you know, one day they're like, Hey, we've got some college athletes coming in. Would you mind taking their pictures? I was like, sure. And so uh, one of those athletes happened to be this, uh, this guy named Tim Tebow. And, um, and so I probably got not even five minutes with Tim Tebow. And I shot this image as well as a few others. Um, so, like, a, you know, I was thrilled that I'd have that shot for my website, my portfolio. Um, at least another year or two went by, and I got a call from a publisher they said, hey, we've been looking for this photo. We thought it was a GQ photo shoot, but we found out it was one of we found out it was one of your photos. So can we use this for his Oh, oh. Um, oh darn. That was a nice story there. Thanks for showing Hello. Us. Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> we were all yeah. enthralled in your story and then you just vanished. <laughs> yeah. So where so where did it cut me out? <laughs> it was uh, right right it was where GQ photo and yeah, they yeah so, they, so they thought it was a GQ photo shoot, um, but it was my little shoot from the gym. And so they bought the rights to it, published the book. The book is now Harper One's uh, bestseller of all time. Um, and Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow did well for himself this year. And so uh, it's been an amazing little thing. So then, so then I start working for Harper Collins and then they hire me to shoot, um, that other book cover, and I don't even know if I dare try to screen share again. Do y'all want me to? Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. So they asked me to shoot uh, Kyle Richards for her uh, book cover, and um, uh, they they didn't have a camera guy that could stand in the back, so that is me. I ended up on her book cover. <laughs> um, so if you go in stores and see this book, you will see me and Kyle Richards on her book cover, which is pretty funny. Um so obviously I had the camera on a tripod for this. Can y'all still hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and the cool thing was they actually uh, filmed our photo shoot. And so a few, a couple months ago, I was on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills uh, as the featured photographer. And there was a probably a good, you know, three, three to four minutes 
of our photo shoot. And so this shoot came from the Tim Tebow shoot, which came from the gym, which came because I was overweight and broke and couldn't afford the gym. So you never know what's going to happen if you're overweight and broke. <laughs> that, that's the that's the moral of the story. You're going to end up on TV. You're going to get to shoot famous people. Um, I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's my that's my very funny story. Uh, technically, this this shot here, the cover, was very very tricky to light. We had lights all over the place behind that counter on the ground, named up at the ceiling. Um, I wasn't too happy that they left her arm as is, because as you can see, her arm is a bit uh needs a little Photoshop love, but that's okay. Um, but they wanted to show like you know, her and her everyday life situation with her kids everywhere and the cameramen. And so uh, that's that's my Real Housewives of Beverly Hills story and my Tebow story and my Laura Bell. Oh, <laughs> he's like, when that I'm out. No, he's a, he's a pro. He is a pro. See how he did that? <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's share a few um, uh, photographers or artists that people might want to circle up or that people should know. Uh, Nicole, do you want to start? Sure. Go for it. Okay, so my very first, uh, I guess I just, I just have one. Um, I hope that's okay. Uh, David Dushman, he is not new to photography or social media, but he's really just started to embrace Google+. And the 15,000 people he has in his circle should be like, amplified by like a hundred times that uh he has a really he has a very talented photographer he writes a lot of amazing books uh, he has an ebook company called craft and vision i kind of talked about a little bit uh, earlier in the podcast or in the in the what is this a hangout podcast <laughs> so uh and there's my book down there but just here are a few photos of his that he's posted recently i think this one is in jamaica and uh, this one was a trip to Antarctica. But he's very, he's, he does a lot of travel photography, humanitarian photography. So if you are a photographer, he's a good person to add to your circle. Great, thank you, Nicole. Yeah, yeah. Dave is cool. Everyone should circle him up. I agree. Um, RC, do you have one for us now? Yeah, I actually do. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and just share my... Here, let me just... RC, while you're at it, can you tell us where to find the website for the... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I was I, I totally wrote an email in the chat. Um, yeah, let me do this. Let me do this. I'll share, I'll share this screen here, and then I'll do both of them at the same time. So if you want to find out more about the Google Plus conference, or you, you want to go to G Plus PC. So gpluspc.com, that's the URL for you to get to the Google Plus Photography Congress. So that's the place, you can go there, you can register, you can take a look at all of the schedules, there's a whole bunch of information down here, right? Not only are we doing portfolios, but you're doing one-on-one -on -one reviews, different types of classes that are going, live location shoots. So make sure that you guys take a look at that and it shows all of the people that are going to be there. So check that out. But the person that I that I want to recommend for this is uh, Brad Moore, right? If you go to bradgplus.com, right, bradgplus.com, that brings you to his website. Brad's is uh, used to work for Scott Kelby, and he before that he worked as an assistant for McNally for Joe McNally. So one of the things that a lot of people don't know about him is that Brad is a phenomenal concert photographer. And it's it's one of those things that's like where you take a look at some of his stuff. He has amazing, amazing work. And he goes out there and just for the pure love of it, just makes these amazing images of great, great bands. And so he, I think that he is somebody who definitely, definitely gets um, a lot of emotion. You know, he's great use of color. So I think that that would be the recommendation for me. You have to take a look at bradgplus.com to check out Mr. Brad Moore. He's the guy that I would do. Great. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy, should we try uh, risking sharing your screen again with your recommendation? Well, I can I can just finish the story instead of trying to share my screen again. Where did it where was I left off that time? No. 
You did finish. Uh, it, it actually had a nice little bow on it, and then you cut out. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. 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 So thanks. Well, thanks. I'll give my uh, little uh, uh, find for you guys. Uh, although I am departing from my usual thing of this person is not on Google+. Plus. I, I wish they were, but this is an inspirational artist to me. And um, if you don't know about this guy, then I just hope you spend some time on his website and and maybe you'll you'll uh, like his work too. His name is uh, Ray Caesar. Uh, I'm going to share my uh, screen here. I just have uh, five five of his photos. I'm going to share. Um, so he does really really interesting work. It's really kind of uncategorizable. And these are the kind of artists I tend to like. Artists that can't really be categorized. Now, I'm going to show you a few images here rather than try to come up with some super niche. Um, he has a really interesting technique. Uh, he has a little bit more about his technique on his website, uh, but it involves painting and uh, CGI and um, all sorts of things. I don't know where this guy comes up with some of these ideas. Um, I mean, he goes from the macabre to the sexual to the macabre and sexual. And, um, just really unique, interesting things that uh, just comes, come out of his mind. And he has a vision for these things and, and uh, just, just does really crazy work. I think the guy's probably a little bit crazy, actually, but crazy in an awesome way. And there's all these little hints all over the place about uh, other little stories that are happening and, all kinds of details. Um, you know, this is just a very random sampling of stuff that I've, I've put together here, but I mean, you probably just get this sense that this guy is just whack and awesome. How do you spell his name again? Uh, it's Ray Caesar. Uh, the Caesar spelling is the uh, Julius Caesar spelling, C-A-E-S-A-R. He has that. He has a very, uh, there's a painter and sculptor named Botero, who's, uh, I think he's a Colombian sculptor. Um, it remind his style reminds me a lot of that. That's so cool. Yeah, that guy, that guy's great. I hope you enjoy his website. It's just raycaesar.com. Um, I've, uh, I want to buy one of his, his, uh, prints. So I've emailed him back and forth a few times. Maybe I'll, convince him to get over here on Google Plus with us. Okay, well, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Tony from Twit. Thank you, Twit Chat Room. Thanks, Dave, for putting this together. And Jeremy and Nicole, and RC, and the guy who's off doing unknown things at his hotel room. Uh, anyway, thank you guys all very much. It was a great show. Um, and for those of you that are coming to the conference in a few weeks, uh, we'll all see you there. And we're looking forward to it. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, we can all just kind of wave goodbye now. And uh, we'll see you next week at the same time. Okay. Bye, guys. Right, bye.